Okay, preparing yes, live sir. stream. The meeting is being live streamed. I got the message. Okay. Now so we are to... live. So now if somebody asks me, what is the link? I'll send that to you, sir. On your WhatsApp. What is the meeting ID for today's meeting? There is a mail from the speaker. I'll send that to you on WhatsApp as well, sir. No, meeting ID, you can just tell me na, verbally. Okay, meeting ID. Uh, yes, sir, I'll tell you. Number meeting one. ID 884 884 6478 Yes, sir. Today's date. Yes, sir. Today's date. Okay, I will just call him up. Sure, sir. If yes, I have his number, I will call him up. Yeah, so the speaker is going to come in a few minutes. Uh, Pranav, when I want to share, I will share the video URL to people. Na? Yes, sir. I'm putting it in the chat box and also I'm sending it to you personally. Right, it's there. Ha, it's there. Okay, fine. This is the video for YouTube live streaming link. So do one and thing. On the, on the WhatsApp group, we will send a message to everyone. Sure, sir. I'll post the link there as well. Ah, uh, you personally just say that uh, if you wish to watch the today's talk on YouTube live, you can just say today's meeting can also be watched at so and so like that. You send a message on the WhatsApp. Group. Yes, sir. That's done, and I'll also send it to you personally just in case. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. I saw it. Okay, no worries. No problem. Okay, so we are all set now. I think Dr. Munkar is here. Good evening, Professor Pan. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very good evening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very good evening. I am going to allow you to share your screen now so that yes. you can. Yeah, you just need to adjust your camera. That's it. Yeah. All set. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'll put my camera also. Just give me a minute. Yes, sir. Yeah. Great. So I need to quickly go and fetch the cable for my laptop because the battery is very low. So you can so make the host in the meantime. I'll do that. I'll okay. give him yeah. the permissions. Okay. So I'm going to make you the host. Just a minute. Okay. I'm getting a call also. Anyway, I'll pronounce. I'll make you the. I'll make you the co-host. I'll make you the host. No problem. So you can yes, take sir. over now, Pranav. Yes, sir. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Omkar, could you please uh, check yeah, if yeah. you can share your screen? I have allowed yeah. you to share yes, your screen. Yes, yes, yes. That... Yes, sir, we can see your screen. Yes. Okay, and the PPT is on? Yes, sir, the PPT is on. Okay. I unshare or is, will it continue like this? 
Uh, sir, right now we are at 15 participants, so I think we can wait for a minute or two and then we can go ahead. No, I'll unshare, stop share. It's it's okay, sir. You can keep sharing. Okay, okay. Just yeah. you can do the full screen, sir. Yeah. Slideshow. Yes, sir. Perfect. So we'll start at exactly 5-5. Five, five. It's currently 5-4. So we'll start in a minute. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, so what we can what we can do in the meantime is in the meantime, I think we can start with the, a very brief introduction about Dr. Omkar. Yes, so he sir. has shared his details, which we have also sent you. But <clears throat> I would like to add that here we have a person who is not only an expert in aerospace engineering, but also in yoga. And this is a very, very rare combination. He has been awarded by the Karnataka government for uh, his contributions to yoga also, which is a very big honor, I think, for a scientist. And apart from that, I know him since many years because I've attended one workshop in optimization when he spoke about some very exotic methods which he has been able to <clears throat> use for solving his problems. Plus, he is one of the few people in the academic community who can not only do research but also make and fly things as you will see today. So we are deeply honored and very happy to have with us a person who the government of India has recognized as an expert in drones because he heads the, he is the chairperson of the drone standardization team of the Bureau of Indian Standards. I welcome Dr. Onkar to today's session and students, you will not get such a person very easily. So please ask your questions and doubts. All of you are working on the problem. I know you're not working on drones, but the design challenges are very similar. So, Dr. Omkar, over to you. I'm looking forward to today's session. Yeah. And with your kind permission, we'd like to record the session. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, because you can give it to the student later. So, Pranav, you can start recording the session on your oh, local sir. machine. Sure, sir. Thank you, Dr. Omkar. You can please start your session. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Rajkumar Pant. Um, I have a lot of respect for the kind of work Dr. Pant does. And uh, well, I also thank the student community and the Aeronautical Society of India for giving me an opportunity to share some of the work that we do in our lab at Department of Aerospace, uh, IASC. Well, amphibious drone, well, we, although technically it means that, okay, it should be able to maneuver on water, plus on ground, uh, that is true, but uh, in general, um, I will present some of the work that we have done at IASC uh, to do the water pollution monitoring in rivers. Um, first, I will start my lecture with few basics about uh, you know, the generic uh, so-called amphibious drones. And then I will particularly converge on to what we have done. What you see already in the picture is what we have actually designed, fabricated, and flown, flight tested uh, in our lab. So we will uh, look at uh, some of these things. 
Well, when it comes to the sea planes or what we call as the um, drones, which have ability to fly both on water and uh, ground, generally you come across some of these varieties. One is the float plane. Of course, this is particularly for the um, takeoff and landing on water. You see generally the floats and the crux of the whole thing is in the design of these floats. This is essentially usual, you know, the uh, planes that fly on the, uh, in the air from taking off from the ground. Um, but these floats are something unique to it. Of course, it has a lot of uh, design requirements, some of it which we will see in a generic sense. Then flying boat where the fuselage hull design itself is very uh, important. And we have two side floats for purposes of stability. And then you have the amphibian kind of uh, drones, which essentially the fuselage hull is designed both hydrodynamically and aerodynamically. And you have the landing gears also for operations on the ground, but they are retractable kind of landing gears. So these are general categories of these uh, seaplane designs. So when you come to some of the important capabilities that one need to look at for the low speed operations on water, well, the vehicle must be watertight. This is very, very obvious, which has to be taken care to cover all the components inside. This is one important thing. Then the vehicle must possess transverse and longitudinal hydrostatic stability. This is a very important criteria. For this, uh, some understanding about how these uh, uh, floating bodies behave on a water surface is very, very important. And thankfully, yes, uh, this is a well-developed uh, technology. We need to adopt it to this. The vehicle must feature means to control the airplane, even when the aerodynamic forces are small or actually absent. You can have some water rudders because you should be able to maneuver the vehicle on water. Then, uh, well, it will have propellers. Uh, uh, the radars in such cases should be placed in the prop wash to aid with control on the water. Then the hull must be capable of allowing the airplane to be, you know, beached. Which means when you arrive at the station, you should be able to uh, beach it. Then during high speed, the hull must be capable of withstanding impact. So when it lands on water, uh, we should understand that the impact is no less. Just because it is water, it cannot be neglected. All of us know this because if you ask uh, high diving swimmers, they will tell you that how to reduce the resistance because if they fall flat, it could be very, very dangerous. So this impact resistance one need to really look at. Then there must be provisions to protect the propulsive unit and the airframe from the spray of water because this could also sometimes, uh, because when you uh, look at the uh, flare, etc., when it lands, you know, you should have taken care of the position and the propellers properly, otherwise uh, it could result in this kind of spraying. Then the vehicle must be controllable on water at all uh, speeds from rest to the liftoff speed. Then it should be optimized, obviously, not only for aerodynamics, but also the hydrodynamic performances. Then takeoff performances should be seen depending upon what is your vehicle payload, sizing, etc. Then cruise, this is, we all know that it should have low drag. Then during landing, 
it should be possible to land the vehicle without excessive impact forces on the airframe. Then it should not generate excessive water spray upon touchdown. So care must be taken. It should be controllable. And then, of course, in case of a uh, manned flight, of course, cockpit design, the view that you get, that also should be taken care of. So the drawbacks essentially come from hydrodynamic drag due to large wetted surface area. When you talk of the whatever may be the design, either the hull or floats, the hydrodynamic drag plays a very, very important role. And then higher aerodynamic cruise drag due to additional structures, because um, if you have floats, you know, you're carrying the traditional structure and therefore additional drag that should be addressed. Then stability issues uh, when it is on the water is also important. Then of course, hindrance from water spray, then low performance in high waves and cross winds. Uh, even when it is on the water, when it is landing, etc. How do you handle or how much of the wave amplitude can you handle? This must be taken into consideration. Um, maneuverability on water is also a deciding criteria, especially when you have very narrow water passages. Uh, there, how do you maneuver? Now, what is the, uh, when we talk about in the air, we talk about things like turn radius, etc even on water, you see such issues may become uh, crucial. Well, these things, I will not bore you much with uh, these uh, things, but some of the basic things that uh, we need to look at is the, of course, the very foundation principle of uh, anything that goes on water. The Archimedes principle, um, this is, uh, we all know that the apparent weight and the object weight, they vary because of this. And then the second uh, interesting thing is the buoyancy force. Now this needs to be considered. I've just given the formulas, but I'm sure um, most of you know because this is basic fundamental physics. Um, then the third result is about the floating tendency. Then the fourth one is the hydrostatic weighing so because the densities of the object uh, in liquid they vary so that's how these come into picture so these have to be calculated and when it comes to the uh, other principles you know when the for example in boats as you have seen in the picture you can see that uh, there is the two important things the bow and stern waves that can really matter and especially when it comes to deciding the hull speed, the speed because this is going to be important because uh, uh, this is for takeoff when you talk about uh, um, UAV or a manned aircraft, seaplane kind of thing, the takeoff speed is very important and uh, so hull speed becomes important and these the bow waves and stern waves, they really matter. And in some cases, if the wavelength becomes more, this could quite often happen when you're deciding, or sorry, designing a UAV because of the shorter lengths that um, the wavelength, if it matches with the hull length itself, then this could actually create a lot of uh, increase in the hydrodynamic uh, drag. That is how you see that uh, in speeding boats, they overcome this problem in a uh, nice way by through proper hull design where they use this uh, bow and stern wave effects to rather reduce the drag than increase the drag. Then of course, uh, one has to look at the hydrostatic uh, stability. What is its uh, 
stability tendency a floating vessel to return to its at rest attitude once it is forcibly tilted one way or the other on the water surface so we when we are i will show you some of the results that we have done even in this for uav also in fact for smaller vehicles this becomes all the more serious consideration um, because of obviously the limitations on the sizing so this other aspect is of course the center of buoyancy one need to look at the position of the centroid calculation of the hydrostatic pressures and then meta center because this becomes a very crucial parameter to determine whether the vessel is stable or unstable um, even static stability you know becomes a serious issue if this meta center is not well designed so this comes from overall shaping etc so there are for the sea planes uh, this physics is well studied there are empirical formulae that are available proper coefficients are also available and uh, one can easily calculate and get an estimate of these meta center height etc there are of course frictional resistance of submerged surfaces because that will also kick in already aerodynamics drag is a serious issue and when you are designing anything that has to go even on water well they also become things to be considered because the wetted area on water will be quite uh, high so that also need to be considered what we have done is we have not looked at any large sea plane we have designed a uav for river pollution monitor these are the requirement from northeastern space application center at uh, daradun and uh, we were trying to design a vehicle for them uh, actually we have designed and completed we have flown the vehicle successfully and that is the story i am going to narrate to you as to how we started what all the small things that we did in the course of this the whole idea is actually to design uh, uav obviously as yes, fixed wing we did not think of rotary wing because uh, the requirement was that it should have fairly good uh, endurance and uh, range the whole idea is that you first we thought we can fit some sensors for measuring some of the uh, water quality parameters it can go dip the sensor and uh, the readings can be reported to a ground control station via a telemetry data link but uh, there are some problem with the sensors just by submerging it is not easy to get many of the parameters there were we decided that we will design a water sample collecting device which can be triggered from the ground control station so the uav will hop from one station to another station and at each station you can collect the water samples some 100 ml or 200 ml whatever is required that also we have designed uh, you can collect the water maybe at uh, six to 10 stations and then come back and then it can be analyzed offline in the lab so with this idea we started uh, the objective was not only to design a uav which can take off and land on water but also to design a mechanism for river water sample collection and integrate it with the amphibian uav so this is how we conceptualized we did try the two float version also that was also successful i will also show that uh, 
flight test to be made with that then for reasons of better endurance better capability better aerodynamics and hydrodynamics we uh, took a configuration as you are seeing now you have uh, you can see two wing floats and basically that um, hull design that is the key aspect the so called fuselage and underneath the fuselage how you design and all the parameters that you see the step etc they also need to be properly tailored so that your hydrodynamic drag is as minimum as you can do this is the mission profile that you have to take off cruise then land in one particular station collect a water sample then again take off cruise and then land and collect another water sample so keep repeating this of course the each sample point is 2 km apart which means we expect about uh, 20 to 30 km of uh, range and uh, the endurance rated to about 1 hour maximum take off weight was given about 10 kg so this is how we started so this is the basic uh, machine profile um, of course then it has to return to the landing location for offline analysis i think most of you if you are from the aerospace community you understand all these weight estimation the fuel fraction method whatever you call so you can compute you do the matching plots etc um, these are all very rudimentary things we have done all these things these are regular you know textbook calculations we have adopted and we arrived at the first configuration uh, you can see how we uh, got the weights the components for the wing wing float then fuselage empennage and tail boom then total airframe weight the electronics battery motor they take a major share and other thing like electronic speed control pixar servos they are not of too much of a thing a payload of 1.5 kg because we wanted to mount that uh, water collecting unit and uh, it has to it has about i think uh, six test tubes and uh, you have to collect the water in that so total estimated weight uh, was about 8.45 kg then we thought okay uh, assuming all the factor of safety etc uh, 10 kg is something that is feasible aerofile selection we did consider a variety of aerofiles we wanted a good l by d ratio also then aerofile chosen was e423 because it's one of the high lift aerofiles and in the picture you can see that we have studied with several other aerofiles also uh, the diagram is not very clear but that's okay uh, you know in any standard xflr program would give you all these numbers we selected the e423 then rudimentary calculations um i'm just showing this to you so that if there are students then they should understand that these are very simple uh, basic calculations uh, whatever we do with the regular fixed wing design most of them hold good then you need to look at the calculation of the fuselage length so that uh, the parameters so these are all from design textbook standard trend curves are available then um, other uh, critical parameters 
about the step etc are calculated then we get a fuselage length then tile sizing most of you are aware you know the vertical tile and horizontal tile we need to size them they are also very well set standard procedures we went through all that then power calculations um, because now here the take off is a real issue so all that we have done and then get all the standard parameters um, so what you look at is that uh, lift off velocity of about uh, 12 meter per second so um, then we did the some numerical studies example or you can see the vertical stabilizer the main wing and the horizontal stabilizers we calculated their lift and drag characteristics then of course for e423 is used for wing and for the tile surfaces we have used naka 0010 for simplicity because this is not a very maneuverable vehicle so we can happily go with that vehicle then combined analysis was done um, to calculate the polars then we get the uh, cl of the wing and what is the lift that is expected then we came to the initial cat design we did that cat design and uh, this is the uh, vehicle now that is conceived so here you can see some of the parameters the curvature in the bottom of the hull flaring is to reduce the water drag and to direct water spray sideways so these are some of the things that we need to consider then the surface discontinuity in the hull that the step is to reduce the water drag and let the airplane rotate easily in water so this is what i said in the beginning that uh, these things have to be considered because maneuvering this vehicle even on water surface we need to address um, then the taper in the rear end of the fuselage is to allow the seaplane to take off at a higher angle of attack then the fuselage is upscaled in order to generate sufficient buoyant force uh, we all understand this that's why the calculation of the buoyant force is very important and the weight of the uav should be less than or equal to the buoyant force we did calculate and you have shown the calculations there very simple and uh, we were satisfied that the um, we whatever we have chosen the weight actually satisfies this and uh, we proceeded with the next steps then drag calculations see here the drag aerodynamic drag is one thing but uh, other thing is of course the um, hydrodynamic drag we did calculate the total hull resistance which is sum of whisker resistance plus uh, wave resistance so even here all these coefficients are available is easy to calculate you know the importance of reynolds number then you can calculate the frictional resistance then viscous resistance so overall we get a drag of about 46 newtons so these matter when you are looking at the hydrodynamic diffraction and response so we did some simulation for this uh, because it was difficult for us to actually experimentally do any such calculations so here uh, the incoming or receding waves you know what is its um effect on the floating structure namely the um fuselage um, in the overall airframe what happens then that some frequencies we have to check and at some uh, reasonable amplitudes we need to check the response so that is what we did the ansi simulation Uh, frequency of the waves was taken as 1.13 and the amplitude 30 mm 
direction of wave first we started with zero degree which means it is aligned with the aircraft we found that all the pressure distribution everything is fairly satisfactory then when it is actually uh, in the other direction the aircraft is in the other direction you can see the uh, what you take as the front view then what happens so that also we have calculated then when the uh, direction of wave propagation is 180 degrees what would how, what is the response of the all that we calculated and then the time response what really happens when the aircraft is disturbed because of uh, this uh, wave direction and amplitude and frequency of the wave and as you can see that it is quite uh, stable so dynamic stability that is once it is disturbed uh, how quickly can it come to equilibrium so all that we calculated so you can see in different direction different orientations um, so so you can this helps us to um, know in the pitch and roll stability in a hydrodynamic sense so then we considering all these things we modified the cad model and this is uh, what we got the front view and the side view then do a cfd analysis for different angle of attacks you start with uh, zero angle of attack and uh, look at the various velocity profiles <clears throat> see whether the uh, the flow conditions the lift generated everything is uh, as per your design the pressure contours all that you get they are all fairly uh, satisfactory then you can calculate the uh, lift that you get you can see various uh, uh, at various velocities at various angle of attacks uh, you can see the values listed and from this we can estimate what should be the wing incidence for takeoff so we found that uh, <clears throat> incidence of about 2 degrees is uh, essential zero degree may not really be ideal so considering these things we came with the final cad model and again as you know that uh, the whole design is a iterative scheme therefore we again ran the cfd analysis we get all the uh, required numbers for different angle of attacks and different velocity profiles we calculate the lift and drag to ensure that uh, our vehicle is fit to fly um, both on water and air so these are some of the uh, pressure contours then the fluent analysis for some of the velocities so the routine design thing so now this water sampling mechanism as you can see uh, this of course we 3d printed we have tested these things so this uh, we can hold some test tubes so they can take about 15 to 20 ml of water so there is a mechanism which allows the water to be sucked from the uh, river or lake whatever and direct into the uh, test tube and you can see the lids there on top which uh, can open and close air tight so there is not going to be any contamination so this is a mechanism that we have uh, designed so servos are there in place and they can be engaged uh, by the ground control station so this also we have designed so take a closer look there is a needle tube which sucks and actually pours the water and the water collecting tube the lids are designed uh, so that uh, you know they are clamped properly once the water is 
collected. So the whole chassis or the support structure is 3D printed, and uh, the uh, test tubes actually are fitted into them. So we did some multiple designs of the chassis also, and um, finally we came to what you see in iteration two. So then we had the, now we had everything in place. We had the structure, internal structure. We have used the blue foam, red balsa wood. Um, the black one you see is the uh, carbon fiber rod and some birch wood and some things for the yellow lawns. So we have also used the balsa wood. Uh, of course, we have to do this structural um, testing of each of these components. And that I will not go into those uh, details. We have done, you can see a closer look uh, of all the ribs, etc., spars, all that. So, this structure we have used the carbon rods wherever it is essential and uh, balsa also. So then you have the final version. Here you can see the how we progress from the CAD model to the lab prototype. You can see here. Then of course, uh, in the for the detailed manufacturing, you see laser cutting. All these things are involved. Then once you do all these things, you have to do the CG balance check, then floating check, then the the water sampling unit that is controlled by the Arduino board, which is sitting on the vehicle. Uh, so all that bench test everything we did. Then materials, as I already told you, different materials. So we had to uh, carefully choose the birchwood bulkhead and longerons with uh, carbon fiber layer uh, to the waterproof fuselage. Then birch and balsa combination for the wing control surfaces, the balsa. Then we have also used foam and carbon fiber layer for the floats because obviously we need to uh, decrease the uh, weight. Then tail boom made of again carbon fiber tube because it has to take that bending load. Then the water sampling mechanism was 3D printed. In fact, one of the components of the tail boom was also 3D printed. So this is the fabrication of the parts. This is our lab, Department of Aerospace Engineering IIC. So at each uh, uh, component level, the weight and strength, all these things were very closely um, monitored. So this is one of the tile boom things. This also we printed, you see, this is 3D printer. So this is done with the 3D printing machine. And uh, all other things uh, done in the house. So then we need to do the, oh, this is the complete assembled and covered. You know, this is the usual mylar sheet. And that you get this whole thing, you do the, then buoyancy check we had to do. We went to a swimming pool. Then in the swimming pool, we just did the float test. You know, how are its float characteristics? Uh, it's very safe to do in the swimming pool to begin with because uh, the water itself is not really, um, you know, that frequency and amplitude issues do not um, bother you much. Okay, then this is the water sampling unit. We did uh, to check whether the mechanisms are doing well or not, whether the water is getting sucked properly and, and is, you see that's the unit. So water should be poured into the um, test tube. 
So water is coming. It's a question of channelizing it to the test tube. So this is also the bench test we have done. Then we were enthusiastic. We went to a lake nearby Bangalore. Nearby means again about 40 kilometers from Bangalore because we all understand cities difficult to fly. But although we designed, you know, it did not really take on. See, the hydrodynamic drag, as you can make out, was rather too much. And we could not really, uh, because we had calculations, you can see the bow waves there. See, it's quite strong. And it, it did not. We had uh, problems. Then we had to go back to the design calculations, look at what needs to be done. So, however much you do the simulation, CFD analysis, etc., but when you translate it to practice, you know, it uh, may not always work the way your simulation promises you. So, we need to rework. So, we went back and took a take of why unsuccessful, obviously, because of the hydrodynamic drag, by the fuselage hull and the wing floats. Then increase the hydrodynamic drag caused by propeller striking water due to less clearance. The prop wash really created some more problems. Then higher wing loading uh, to lot takeout distance, uh, which again contributed hydrodynamic drag. Then very minimal air authority, so that you know it became difficult to maneuver the aircraft in the water. Then increase the wing area, redesign fuselage hull, then increase the radar area to increase the air control. So these measures we need to take because uh, we have to understand that design is iterative and however much carefully, however much sophisticated tools you use for simulation, obviously there is going to be challenge when you translate it practically. So we modified the uh, model. Again, you have to do all that. Then CAD model was rendered. Then we again went for the flight. You can see this. This time, you can see how it moves compared to the previous video. You observe that uh, the so-called waves that it generates, that it will tell you uh, what is the hydrodynamic drag. So you can see that propeller is on, now it's moving. You throttle it. You can see, see how the, ah, now it takes off. So please remember your uh, earlier case when the hydrodynamic drag was too high. Now this was very smooth. Uh, basically the hull design, you see, that the crux of the thing and between that hull and this hull, there's no major uh, design change, so to say. But some tweaking is, can really uh, matter. And the fluids and our pilot did some maneuver. Here I should really thank my students, Mr. Sharath, Kshamit, Alva, and Mr. Chandrasekhar, and of course several others whose name I'm sorry I could not remember. I should thank them. It is their uh, walk and my talk. And they are the people who have really struggled day and night to realize this product. Uh, it's our team. And see the landing. It's approaching for landing. Essentially, yes, uh, very low impact. That's why good gliding is very important. You can see how smoothly it glides. And then it lands. So this is one hop, and I think he will go for one more uh, 
light. You can see that uh, again throttles. So you can hop and collect the water sample and then again take off and land. So that is the whole idea of our uh, project. You can recognize how smooth is the hydrodynamic uh, movement. We can do some maneuvers. But of course, this is not uh, meant to do any great maneuvers. We are just doing some loitering because we cannot hop to another place and do that. But uh, a large water body like a river, it can do hopping from one station to another. And then it uh, approaches for landing. I think it was also quite uh, windy that day. Yes. Okay. Well, we understand that on actual, uh, because this is a lake, and when it comes to, uh, so that's a very smooth landing. When it comes to river, yes, there could be a little more challenges because the water is moving. Yeah, now I had to take it to that stage to check. So this is another thing that we have done. You see the floats there with the floats. The other uh, what, and what you see, what you saw is about the hull and this is with the floats. So this also uh, really flew well. Yeah. So that's, uh, these are the two things. But I would like to share with you about the materials. See, this is where we need to really try use of composites. Uh, is quite good. And we have in one of the aircrafts done the, you know, instead of using the carbon rods themselves, or instead of using ball saw, etc. of as par, we have uh, tried to do a, a carbon filament winding technique. Okay. I would like to show that this is the truss winding machine. We did this and we can uh, use the carbon filaments. So, but this we are not explored much, but uh, because some students are there, I thought I should share this. This, this is the truss. See, then you can do shaping, etc., in a very simple way. And uh, this is what we have done. You see, this is an aircraft. How we can launch it by hand? How light it is, very light. Gross weight is 800 grams, including everything, motor and battery. And quite uh, strong because of the carbon filaments, but uh, you can really, can, of course, cost is a matter, but otherwise this is a good to look at. So this is what I thought I should share with you all. Namaste, Jai Bharat. Thank you so much, sir. That was a really beautiful presentation. And uh, I think we can open it up for question and answer sessions. If someone has any questions, uh, is that okay, Professor? Pant? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Yes. Uh, so I request any participant to please unmute themselves and uh, they can directly interact with Dr. Omkar if they have any questions. Because yes. I have a lot of questions regarding this thing because I was really fascinated by the work you're doing, sir.
Okay, guys. So the floor is open to any any team member, any student. Please yes, yes. don't hesitate. Please, please, Just please, please, please ask. Yes. If I don't know, I will connect you to my students. They will help you. Yes. Yeah, some of some of some people from IIC called me and they are on the meeting also now. I think. Oh, I see. Because they also had a problem regarding this uh, meeting ID. Oh, okay. Yes. Any questions? Please feel free. We are all here okay. to share thoughts so, and okay. ideas. Unka, 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 yeah. I'll start some. I'll start questioning from my side. So I just <laughs> I'm very curious to know. Uh, yeah. Did you do this as part of some kind of an ongoing sponsored or research project, or was it just to explore the domain of amphibious aircraft? No, this is uh, as I mentioned. This was a requirement from Northeastern Space Application Center. As you know, it is one of the divisions of ISRO. Okay. They actually gave some limited support for this. Some limited funding was given. Then we thought, okay, we will try and make it. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good. Yeah. Because you know we are always looking at how to how to fund our projects. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I think we have constant <laughs> problem. We all share the problem. Yeah. I am happy you are doing so much with all these restrictions. <laughs> yeah, what to do? Yeah. But anyway, um, funds are hard to come, but we have to keep floating. <laughs> yes. Okay, students. Um... I am audible. Yeah, yeah, yes, please, please. Go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, good evening, sir. Sir, I have a quite basic question like, uh, uh from your first uh, aircraft and the second aircraft is broader hull, but there any other major changes that you uh, did in that aircraft from the first model and the second model? I mean, in the hull design itself, uh, yes, sir. Like, yeah, what were the that changes? hull itself. That uh, step design and all, there was some problem in the initial version. Basic hull structure remained the same, but being there are some steps and all, I showed you that. So that really mattered a lot. So our students figured out how to uh, arrive at a very optimal um, way of doing that. So what matters is, I'll show you that. Let me pick up that slide. Yes, yes. Yeah, here in this figure, these step shape and the amount of step you give, they actually matter. So all the parameters you see here, for example, let me go to a bigger figure here, here, yeah. Can you see all these things? Yes, sir. So yeah, you can make our screen as full screen. That will be better also. Uh, if you just click on F5. Yeah. So all these things matter. So like this was the uh, one of the things uh, due to which the uh, like in the first model we had more amount of uh, hydrodynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hydrodynamic drag. Uh, matters. First, when we did, we thought, okay, it will go, but um, that, as you can see, the two oil again, maybe, uh, I hope you can make out the drag that it produces. You can see the wave structure itself, that itself shows you uh, how large is the drag and how it gets minimized by good design. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, I had a couple of questions. Can I please, ask them? Please, please, sir. Yes, sir. So, first question was, in the first model that you uh, had shown, which did not had a successful flight, uh, the hydrodynamic drag was close to about 4.3 kgs, 43 newtons. Right, sir? Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the second one, post uh, changing the hull design, so can you recall the drag value? I don't recall, you should excuse me, I should ask my students. 
I can give you exact number if you wish. You can see. And Husayn, just what a rough figure. But it is. Uh, you can see from the two that it is substantially reduced. Right. Okay. So the actual number I should have put it, but anyway. And uh, sir, so another thing like um, you were talking about the uh, yaw instability in the previous model. Hence, you had to increase your rudder area. It is uh, more than yaw instability and maneuverability. Sorry, sir. Yaw maneuverability. So, sir, in your uh, in the lateral directional stability derivatives. Hmm. Uh, so, what was the um, any amplitude time? Amplitude time. The settling time. Settling time. So these things you should excuse me. I don't see honestly. I don't remember this. No numbers, issue, sir. No numbers, but you can write to me. We will. We have our design report. I can uh, get all these numbers. Right, sir. Right, sir. Like, uh, but I know uh, what soft... we did is we just increased huh. the surface area. Right, sir. And so I think many students will be curious to know, sir, which softwares uh, do uh, you use for designing the aircrafts mostly? As we saw, Ansys was a very common software. Ansys, Ansys. is very Ansys. common. Fluent is there. Ansys. Ansys. CFD analysis. Ansys and Katia, Katia for the designing yeah. part. Yeah. That I think modeling. very standard, uh, you know, set of softwares. Right, sir. Of course, now we have acquired, I don't remember the names, some very specific UAV design softwares. Um, if you want, I can call my student and ask right away. If you want to know some specific software for UAV design? I can tell uh, you. No, you can me. Recently, I'll definitely get in touch. I'm forgetting yes, its name. Of course, now there are some UAV specific softwares that have come. Otherwise, what right. we have found is for most of the things, this XFLR is a wonderful tool. Wonderful software. Yes, sir. Yeah, even you don't need the CFD analysis for many of these things. XFLR does all that. Yes, sir. That and also, have, sir, I... Yeah. Please, sir, go ahead. Please, go ahead. That Sorry. I have found is a very, very great utility. Easy to use. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, no cost is involved, so that's good. Right, sir. Uh, so for students... Yeah. For initial design and all that, that is a very great uh, software. Right, sir. <laughs> so one more question I had that in your uh, in your model, uh, in your first model, the previous one in the single boom model, which uh, was not a good flight, as you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. So I saw the boom had an angle. The boom had an angle. It had some angle. It was not straight. I understand that is because of the water. Because you want to fly on the water, fly on the water. But so, yes. how did you determine the exact angle? Like, which strategy did you use to determine the exact angle when you made the single boom one, sir, with the prototype? Let me come back. Yes, sir. The above one, the red color photo. This one. Yes, sir. Just go above two slides. Two slides. Yes, sir. This one. As you can oh. see, sir, it's not straight. The boom is not straight. So the, it's at an angle. Which one? This one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The boom. Oh, Correct, yeah. Sir. This, that this, one. This, is, this is straight. But we have elevated a bit. That's it. It is not bent in the longitudinal direction. Okay, it's I see. Slightly. Z axis is slightly up. So maybe it different. is visually, you may be finding it like that. Uh, okay, I see, sir. Yeah. Okay, that's it from my side, sir. Thank you so much for the presentation. If any other student has any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Sir, I'm Divyan Shoman. I have doubt from the Rajkumar, sir. I have to ask something from the notification in previous webinar. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe we will take that at the end. Let somebody finish. There was one more person who asked a question on okay, the chat sir. window. Okay, yeah, sir. You can ask it later when there are no other questions to this particular presentation. We can do it. Ishwar Kumar had a question. Ishwar yes, yes, Kumar. Sir. Ishwar, can you unmute Ishwar and speak? Or uh, maybe we can read out the question. Yeah, I'll please. read out the question, sir. 
So the question is, if we are going for floats, is there any need to design a hull for the fuselage? No, not really. That's why there are two distinct approaches. One is if you, of course, even with the hull, you should have wing floats. Because if you want to have a stable, uh, hydrodynamically stable, wing floats should be there. But if you do not want to take care of the hull design, for example, you want to simply convert your fixed wing to a seaplane kind of thing, then best is to design hull. Right. So you don't have to touch your fuselage per se. I see. So you can simply convert your fixed wing. Of course, you have to address some of the issues, as I said, the meta center, the center of gravity, etc. If you take care of that, then your normal fixed wing, you can, by designing a hull, you can make it amphibious. I see. Uh, Norman, you can please unmute yourself and speak. Uh, otherwise, I'll be happy to. Uh, yeah, Prana, read out your so I think you, Prana, you, you can read out the question. Sure, sir. Yeah. So, in the float plane, the second prototype model which you had shown, it was seen that the float dimensions are very large when we compare it to the main body, sir. Hmm. Oh, so, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, this one, no. Yes, yeah, sir. The yes. sec yeah, the render. Correct, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, am I audible? Yes, Norman. Please go ahead. Yeah. I would like to know the float size are very uh, like comparable with the main body. So Correct. are the floats are big in size as is shown in the picture? Are they? So are they oh. as big in size as they are shown in the picture? Oh, very much. You see the flying vehicle? No Photoshop. Actual photo. Yes, sir. But floats are very big in size. Yes, yes. Very much. So, but no, they don't they cause a lot of drag? No, no, no. They are needed because they are. He's carrying water, na. He's carrying water as a payload. So, if it is a heavy aircraft, then you need to create buoyancy. Also, so you need float. Yeah. Also, here we have demonstrated this too. We had uh, another fixed wing aircraft. You see this fuselage. It is not hydrodynamic at all. Right, yeah, sir. He wanted to carry this yeah. fellow on water. Right. And to suit that, we had to design the floats. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you think any of the amphibian aircraft or uh -huh. sir, if we think amphibian aircraft for passenger carrying trans, like passenger carrying amphibian aircraft, hmm. so in that case, uh, these uh, floats will be the dead weight for us. Yes, it depends upon your design option. See, yes. if you want to convert an existing uh, aircraft with usual landing gears into a safe plane, then this is the best option. In fact, many safe planes you will see like this. They don't redesign the fuselage as a hull and then do because it has other penalties. If you want to simply convert, yes, this is going to be a penalty, no doubt. Okay, sir. In any of these hybrid configurations, for example, you take any of these VTOL vehicles, uh, which has quadcopter and some tractor or pusher kind of configuration. Obviously, yes, uh, for vertical takeoff, you use the, the four propellers, then they become deadweight when in forward movement. So these are some of the penalties you have to live with. Right. So how do you uh, counter the negative pitching moment of a high lifting airfoil if you use one in an aircraft on an UAV? Hmm. So how do you counteract that? No, that is a simple design issue. See how you configure. So that is not a serious issue. Isn't it? 
So, but won't the nose length? We have to increase the nose length. Or yeah, yeah. Give obviously, it a sufficient. Obviously, it comes in terms of how do you configure. That's all. Because mm-hmm. it's not something you cannot resolve. That's what I meant. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Overall, your configuration you have to match so that you can handle that. Right. I see. Yes. Anyone else is having any questions? Please feel free to. Yeah, ask, I have a sir. question. I have a question about the payload. So, three point five kg is the gross weight of this aircraft. How much payload could it carry? No, this one actually, the payload is quite less because uh, this we did uh, because we wanted to uh, work on this uh, design of the floats itself. Okay. Then its payload, because it's very less, that is why we looked at the hull design. Okay, that, okay. that is the one which can carry better payload. It can carry one and a half kgs. Okay. All right. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Yeah, uh, so sir, uh, I have a question like uh, uh, the second prototype that you talked about like, uh, with that hull design. So can we, you know, uh, use that cheap plane uh, act as a lifting body itself? Which one? Uh, uh, the, pre- uh, the previous design. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, that was my question. Yes, yes. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, my name is Ajit Chitri. Yes, Ajit. And sir, I want to ask, uh, in the first boom structured model, there is no step. I think there was no step. Because, mm-hmm. but in the second and third, particularly in the third, there is very large step. And in the second, there was a step. So how did you determine that step depth, sir? Uh, did you no, done some iteration or you have directly chosen some step depth and you have done? No, no, no. Actually, these are all uh, you know, design. There's nothing called a unique configuration for any of these vehicles. You know, design is an iterative process and there are a lot of, it involves a lot of trade-offs. If you take one configuration, you have to compensate it in some other design variation. So there is no sanctum values for these things. You choose with one and adjust the others. It depends upon what is your prime objective. If you want to, uh, for example, stick to a particular type of hull design, then for stability, etc., you may have to match it with some other control surfaces, etc or wing incidents, etc. So it is a designer's choice. And for example, the same payload, same thing, perhaps you can come out with some other design, which is very different from what we have done. It's quite possible. So it is all about the designer's choice. But whatever you do, run through some of these well-known uh, simulation software so that you will get that primary confidence that your configuration works. But ultimately, when you translate it, yes, you will see uh, it is not, you know, the simulations, they will 100% guarantee you because ultimately the proof of the pudding is in flying. And then once you fly, you will know that uh, certain things which you have not addressed will really come up. Then that's what you have to actually, uh, again, go back, look at. So this is a very interesting process. We cannot say, okay, this is the thing. Even now, with all of our, some of the optimization we have done, we cannot claim that this is the optimized uh, aircraft for this purpose. For example, a lot of other things we have not studied. In fact, the wing itself, our wing is a plain rectangular. So there itself, you can see a lot of things. You can, uh, why not some polyhedral wing? In fact, in one of the, uh, uh, for a company, when I designed a fixed wing, I found that giving a polyhedral 
configuration will enhance the performance uh, very much in particular altitude conditions etc so very difficult to say what all we can say is yes, with this configuration these are the numbers and uh, this is the flight test result so what are the parameters it has overestimated and underestimated like you say drag a drag it has underestimated in the uh, first flight correct so, it is basically aerodynamic only because aerodynamically there are no major issues because our experience in uh, you know making lot of such vehicles over a period of time so pretty much uh, we are sure hydrodynamics is we were not much exposed to and it's only that the estimation problem was only there but now that also we have gained some confidence we know yes okay this is what it is in fact if you carefully look at the drone industry itself you take any of these drones uh, most of us today you all know that it's all multi rotor configurations you think how much is aerospace there can you say less than 10 yes exactly you are right it is more yeah. about what is your domain knowledge about other electronics how you manage that integration today it has uh, gone much beyond just simple aerodynamic designs so your domain knowledge about other things like what kind of uh, power management you do what kind of uh, batteries how do you organize them the electronic the speed controllers the servos see so much has come the you know um, the kind of uh, computing boards you use because if you simply put a arduino board and things like that it is equal to putting one motor so today i think the uh, flying vehicles is no longer just Uh, aerospace game or aeronautical engineers uh, property it has gone much beyond that but it is very interesting to see yes okay so now we can go to divyanshu divyanshu you had a question addressed to me regarding yes, some announcement so you can start that now Sir, in the second webinar, it was said that um, that thirty minutes of ranging is a scooping and firefighting zone. We have to spend thirty minutes on scooping plus firefighting zone. But when a notification come, it was written there that let me read. It was written there thirty minutes at the fire zone. Right. So you please follow the notification because the notification has been issued. finally after a discussion with all the stakeholders inside our team so yes. the notification is important and, and sir and uh, okay sir and the is after is scoping we have to come to the fire fighting zone it will take time that time is not calculated in 30 minutes am i right sir no it is not calculated 30 minutes well, is required by the fire fighter to douse the fire over the station okay sir so so the aircraft has to take the water or the chemical go to the location and now we have to fly 30 minutes over the location to fight to fight the fire and then you come back okay sir and second question we have sir can we assume the fire zone lake and airport at the same altitude you can assume that okay sir you can assume that see in uh, whenever we don't mention anything about the altitude you can assume it to be isa sea level okay sir hmm. and third question i was is there any constraint on the height with the payload or without payload or we have to depend on the etc no no don't worry about that this is not going to be flying mostly in an uh, controlled airspace so you may or may not really be worried too much about the etc so 
uh, don't worry about the altitude that ATC will give you, but you should ensure that while you are traveling from uh, the filling station to the location, you don't, uh, you cannot uh, fly at very low altitude. You need to maintain some minimum altitude. Uh, you know, so you find out what is the minimum altitude of flight available okay, in sir. general for an aircraft. Okay, sir. And take that altitude. Okay. So my request to you is if you have questions like these, no need to wait till the webinar. We have a group. We have an yes, email sir. address. We yes, are getting many emails from teams. So we clarify the doubts then and there. Within a couple of days or so, we normally respond. So no need to wait for webinar or you have a WhatsApp group, you have an email address, ask your doubts by that. Okay, sir. Okay, whenever you have doubts, please use those channels. Okay, sir. Okay, Thank now, you, sir. Uh, so Dr. Omkar, I would like to uh, close the session now. Thanks yes, a lot sir. for a very entertaining and a very Thank informative you. Thank session. you. And before we go, uh, we would. I would like to make a small announcement for everybody. So, uh, as many of you know, uh, we are conducting a conference on lighter than air systems in IIT Bombay in the month of June this year. The name of the conference is Deltas, Design and Engineering of LTA Systems. The website is deltas2022.in. I will request uh, Pranav to type the website address in the chat window. But the important thing for you is that in this conference, on the last two days, we are going to conduct an indoor airship flying competition. And in this indoor airship flying competition, there are going to be teams from all over the world which will come because it has got the approval of the International Aeromodeling Federation. So now what we are doing is to encourage teams from India to take part. Exactly one month from now, on 26, 27, and 28th of March, we are going to conduct an online workshop on design of indoor remotely controlled airships. Uh, it will be conducted under the banner of Shastri Indo Canadian Institute. So one faculty member from a university in Canada will be participating. So just to tell you that the first day will consist of introduction and sizing procedure. On second day, we are planning to do a tutorial where you can calculate the numbers. And on the third day, we will show you how to uh, fabricate, how to assemble and how to fly. So this is an online workshop for three days. There will be no charges for the workshop. It is free of cost, but you have to register. And the poster for that will be released very soon. It has gone for the approval to Shastri Institute. By, by Monday or Tuesday, we should get it. Also, if some people are interested, we will be happy to conduct another workshop in IIT Bombay where teams can come here physically in our lab and they can make their small airships. So we will teach you practically how to make. Uh, Dr. Omkar has already contacted me for some of his students. So we will be very happy to host your students after a few days when IIT opens up. Right okay. now, we are not opening up for outside students, but situation is improving every day. Yes. I have a feeling that by about, uh, maybe about by mid-March or so, it will become better. So, I will sir, get but, uh, I, have, yeah. I have a question here. This is open only for students or some project staff can join? Anyone. No, this oh. particular this particular workshop and the regatta is open for anybody. Oh, okay. uh, anybody. And anybody interested. Yes, yes. yes, not only students. Anyone. Okay. Okay. There are many enthusiastic people uh, from all over the world who are not students. They are very, very experienced aero model. They are coming. Oh, then so since it is approved by the Federation and we have the backing of aero, aero Club of India, all the records created will be called as international records or Indian records. Okay. So uh, I would like to encourage students to watch out for the poster regarding the workshop. Yes. Uh, Three-day online workshop attend the workshop and then later on we will plan a practical face-to-face -face workshop. Yes. Okay. So, so with that, I would like to wish all of you a very good evening and uh, thank you so much for uh, attending our sessions. And uh, we will also look for uh, suggestions for topics for the next webinar. Normally we have a webinar on every third, uh, third week of the month. So by, 
by march also we would like to have so please uh, students should please tell us what they would like to hear and uh, once again dr omkar thank you so much thank you okay. namaste to all namaskar yeah uh, one question has come from a student uh, about filling of fire retardant depends on the airport people or should we need to design mechanism for that no no don't worry about that filling of retardant is not your headache so you can assume that that it will be done by the people in the airport you design the aircraft more than anything else the only thing you will design beyond the aircraft is the method mechanism to scoop the water that's all okay so with that i'm going to uh, stop the meeting so pranav please take over i will leave the meeting now sir sure, sir sure i'll do that thank you and good evening thank you pranav thank you so much thank you so much dr onka it was a pleasure yeah thank you we can stop the meeting now yeah and